Hello everybody, today I'm going to fly with my dad. It took me a little over four years to complete this RV7 and my dad was a great help during the build. You can see the whole building process of Papa Hotel Mike November X-Ray on the videos on this channel. So this will be the fifth flight and since I've gained a lot of confidence in the reliability of this RV7 it's now time to take my dad up in the sky. And it's a beautiful sunny day in Teugen Airport, so let's fly together. Okay, this is the helm op. Hold. Ben ik klaar voor? Ja, ja. Oké, daar gaan we. So the mission of this flight will be calibration of both the heading indicator and the vertical speed indicator. And yes, I tried to calibrate the heading indicator in the previous flight, but I failed and uh, I'm not sure why. Apparently I was unable to both fly the plane and do all the mechanics of calibrating the heading indicator. The load is too high for me, and um, so I decided, okay, okay. Uh, let's take my dad with me, and I uh, prepared uh, on the tablet the procedure, so this way we could follow the procedure on the tablet, and we could do the calibration together, which is good, I think. Uh, also, I was a little bit better prepared than last time, so that's, uh, that's also good. So I don't know exactly how you would make a sensor uh, calibrate itself in flight. I know uh, in the previous century we had North Seeking gyros, but there are no gyros now, so uh, there's probably some kind of electronic uh, similar device that can do it. Anyway, the goal is to, um, to just start flying uh, circles in different uh, angles and um, this way uh, you can you gather samples and every time when you have uh, it, the first let's say 36 I think or 40 samples are needed to to get the heading indicator started and then you can see that the heading indicator already uh, kind of lines up with the um, with the compass well, well of course the compass is, is shifted because you're you're turning but uh, at least you see more sensible readings than than uh, what what I see right now, and then after that uh, it it takes another hundred samples uh, to to get correct, and you can see the correctness with a fit. So it uh, you can see on the on the EFIS that it uh, it gives you a fitness uh, percentage, uh, which first is around 50, and then it and it and it's, it of course it it uh, greatly varies. So it goes to back to 20, and then to 80, and then back to 30, and then Gradually, it's um, it's getting higher and it's um, less less variation in it, and in the end we reached about 98.5 or 98.7 percent. Um, probably, if you would just continue, you can maybe even make it higher. But uh, I think 98 percent is uh, pretty good anyway. So um, yeah, that's when we quit. Okay, after the um, calibration of the heading indicator, we did a quick buzz around my house. Um, that was nice. start calibrating the vertical speed indicator. So for the vertical speed indicator calibration it's, it's done by a percentage 
And uh, what we did is we um, we went to 3,000 feet, and then I tried to maintain a steady 500 feet per minute glide down while my dad was checking the stopwatch. And uh, we did it for exactly one minute. And the first round turned out that we were about uh, we were we, we uh, descended about 600 feet. So I had to uh, increase the percentage. And second time we did it, and uh, I was down to uh, to 10 feet difference, which is way below the error f uh, the error ma margin because there's no way I I mean I can keep 500 feet, but that's <laughs> somewhere between let's say 540, 550, and uh, 450. So uh, there there is a the margin there is bigger than than the the margin that we had. So um, uh, that's close enough, I guess. And it was about 120 percent. So I had to increase uh, the defector with uh, 120% and uh, yeah, looks pretty good now. Looks pretty good now. So after calibrating the uh, vertical speed indicator, uh, I decided to let my dad fly a little bit. Uh, that's probably also a good idea because uh, he didn't really like the, uh, the turning and twisting with the uh, calibration of the um, of the heading indicator. And I found that if you're on the controls yourself, it's uh, it's much better for your stomach. So uh, so that was good. And after uh, having a little fun, we uh, we went back back to Sierra and back into the circuit for Teugen and uh, making ready for the landing. This time I came in uh, too fast. Uh, there was almost no wind. Uh, but I, I still came in too fast, so I was about 70 knots. It's uh, 5 knots too fast. And that uh, resulted in a little bit more uh, wing and ground effect, so um, I, I glided over it. And uh, I didn't really like the landing. I made uh, three kind of bumps. Uh, they were little, but uh, I don't like it. I have to do better next time. Okay, so we're taxiing back to the hangar, and I really want to thank my dad for all the work he did in the last four years helping me building this uh, beautiful plane. Uh, it was really a really nice experience for the both of us to, to do this together, and uh, yeah, I, I really like it. But I'm really glad I had uh, we had this beautiful day together, uh, flying in, uh, in the machine we built on for four years. Okay, continuing building my pie in the sky.